Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Unfound podcast channel on YouTube. I'm, of course, Unfound's host, Ed Denzel. I hope everybody is having a great day. As the title suggests, this will be a very comprehensive map analysis for the disappearance of Treveline Evans from Langothlin, Wales in the United Kingdom in 1990. And yes, that is how you pronounce it. I'm doing my best as a stupid Amer uh, as a stupid American to pronounce it pronounce that down the right way. Uh, in fact, Heather and I had a funny, uh, not long but funny discussion about how we were going to say that name during uh, her interview and try to represent for Americans even though we both knew we were going to butcher it. But that is how you pronounce it, even though there's no TH in that word, that's how you pronounce it. So Langoflin, something like that. It is certainly not Langolin or Langolian or anything like that. All right, so, uh, and please, as you're watching, if you're not a, yet a subscriber to this channel, please hit the, the button in the bottom right-hand corner down in this area. And if uh, you'd like, please join this channel. You get some things for becoming, like a nice little club. Get some things that other people don't get. You get some things that early. Please check that out by hitting the join button below. And please share this map analysis with anybody that you think might find it interesting. All right, so we're looking here at Langothlin in Wales, in the United Kingdom. We just have to remember that what you're seeing here on the screen is a recent picture and is not from 1990. However, given what I think I know about the town and everything, I'm not sure how much of it has changed since then. Has the population gone drastically up? I don't know, but I think that given that this town probably is from like the 12th century or something, and once we go to Street View, you'll see what I mean, I'm not sure how much um, change has gone on, at least in the area that we're talking about, which is right there in the center of the screen. So please keep that in mind. This is over 30 years ago. However, this is Wales, Langothlin, Wales, and not uh, maybe some of the southern states uh, in the United States where they have these huge population um booms or like Las Vegas, like when I moved there, it was a population boom. I'm not sure Langoflin has experienced anything like that over the 30 some years. So I think what we're looking at here is very representative. Now, where was Treveline shop? It was right in this area over here. Now, what is kind of confusing is this little road right here is actually Church Street. But when you get over to here, the street changes its name for some reason. So it's only Church Street from like this point down to that point. Let me zoom out just a little bit there. From there down to this point down there. This is Church Street. And then once you get in here, it changes names. And so her, her um, store was on Church Street and it was right in this area. And I'm going to come back to that. Now, where she lived was on Market Street, and this is Market Street over here. She lived over in this area. As you can tell, not very far. In fact, if I were to do uh, a map, a uh, little graph here, a little route walking, it's 0.3 miles. That's it, which is like half a kilometer. And as you would suspect, it wouldn't take very long to walk that. You just go right down this street, get here, make a left, make a right. And she is at her store, three-tenths of a mile, meaning she could probably walk that in about five minutes. That's it. So keep that in mind for later. Now, another issue is that if uh, in the interview, and you will uh, see it in articles written about Treveline's disappearance, you will hear that her car was 200 yards away, and we're going to have to get into that, I think, a little bit. I'm not sure where her car was parked. Just have to keep in mind that possibly something has changed uh, in Langoflin since then. But 
it's hard to determine where her car was if it was 200 yards away, that's 600 feet. Uh, I see this parking lot over here, but that's basically like where she lives. So she wouldn't go move her car, park it there. And, and it, it's believed she did drive over here. So where her car was actually over here is unclear to me. I don't know. I really tried to find it. just says 200 yards away. I don't know what in direction or anything, but I think we have to think about the walk from her place in the morning to the store would have been three tenths of a mile, which is about 1500 feet. It's a little over a quarter mile. And she was parked, her car was parked 600 feet from the store. So it's not like driving her car to the store that day really saved her much of a walk. That's how we have to think about these things. And now very well could have been that she had to carry things. Very well could have been uh, maybe she had a foot problem or something. But it's still something we have to consider. Why drive three-tenths of a mile that's 1,500 feet when you ended up parking the car 600 feet away from your store anyway? That only saved you that you know, 900 feet. You saw you only saved just 600 feet. I don't know. This is a little confusing to me. I try to think of it in terms of where I live and where I go th to throw discs uh, just north of me. That's two-thirds of a mile. That is easily uh, farther away than this. So it's a little hard to understand uh, regarding that. Maybe it's part of the disappearance, maybe not. Got to, you know, you'll have to determine that yourself. But we just don't know where her car was. It was certainly not parked right out front of her store. So zooming in here a little bit more, there's something else that was not clear to me during the interview, but is now clear to me. I'm going to bring it up in this map analysis, is that we talked about how the front door was locked. Remember, there was that note on it, be back in two minutes. And we talked about how there was a door in the back that might have been unlocked. That leaves the kind of the idea in everybody's mind that there might have been an alley back there or something. There's not, and I'm gonna have to change views to show you that. You'll see by moving to this uh, view, there is no road back there. This uh, area back there um, is just grass or some other buildings, but. So it's not like somebody could have driven a car back there, gone in there, let's say she did come back, attack her, drag her out to a car. There's no road back there. And in fact, you can see the main road is right here in front, and there's a road over here. So it's a little hard to imagine somebody sneaking in while she had come back and locked the door, I don't know, and then take her out here. Then what exactly happened here? Um, it's a little hard to understand. I don't want it to, because we think in the United States, we think about stores that are along the main street. We just take for granted that then there's an alley in the back for the garbage truck or deliveries or whatever else. That is surely not the situation here in Langothlin in Wales. Now, the reason there's a big difference is because a lot of, um, our building that has occurred in the United States was in the 20th century when roads were already constructed. Cars were already a thing. We forget how young and new our country is, especially when it's buildings. And so these buildings are built this way. When these little stores and buildings were built, maybe it very well could be, I'm not joking around, the 12th century, of course all they had were horses. And so there's no need for alleys and everything else. So just keep that in mind as well. Certainly somebody could have come in the back, but somebody couldn't have driven a car up, attacked or thrown her into the car and driven away. Just not possible. Now you're probably thinking, well, what about that river there, Ed? Well, we're going to take a look at that. The River D in Wales. And I'm going to take you over and do a little street view right here. I'm going to plop you down, or us down, right on top of this bridge because it's going to give us a really good view. Uh, this is from December of 2022. Now, what I want you to see here, I'm going to have to go out here a little further out into the bridge. 
And I'll zoom in a little bit. So now we're looking, um, what would that be, east. And what do we notice about that river in the picture? What we notice is that you can see ripples, you can see rocks. Uh, dare I say it, as long as you're able-bodied, an able-to-body adult, you could walk across that river. Now, it may get deep in spots and everything, but just on this average day, looks like it's fall maybe. Oh, it says December 2022, so it's winter. Um, certainly not the Mississippi. Certainly not a river where if, um, let's say that Treveline was suicidal, she went into this river, her body's not going very far, and dare I say it, she jumps into this river, I'm not even sure she's going to die during the jump. And it doesn't also doesn't look like the type of river where somebody is going to drown unless in jumping in they hit their head or something. But it just doesn't seem to me this type of river would take her body very far. In contrast to, as I mentioned in the episode, I think, Jake Lachalet, Shane Fell, some others, Ben Archer, who disappeared next to the Delaware River, those are massive deep rivers compared to the River D right here. Certainly something that needs to be thought about, but I think on first glance and thinking about it, it doesn't seem like a viable choice. Now maybe we can uh, look up the opposite direction, we then would be looking in the direction of um, where Trevelyne lived, and I think it's even more of the same. You got a lot of rocks, you got ripples and things. This river is not that deep. Certainly still could be dangerous. If you slip and fall, hit your head, yeah. But that would mean that somebody went in there on purpose. This is hard to understand with Trevelyne's disappearance. So I'm not sure that the river uh, gives us the answers we're looking for. If she did walk off, there was a sighting of a woman going down the river who knows if it was even Treveline, but certainly the river is flowing uh, toward the camera in contrast to this one in where it's flowing away from the camera, like going down toward our store. This just does not seem like a river that's going to kill anybody, my, my opinion. So let's go back to uh, this satellite view and look at this. Then we have a sighting of her over by her store or over by where she lived over here. And oh, I wanted to do a little street view just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here. And I think you'll quickly see as Americans, we kind of just take our, look at this church street. I mean, look how narrow it is. You can tell that this, these buildings and everything were... Uh, built back in the time of horse and carriages and things well before cars, and I f think her store was right in here somewhere. And I think understanding this, looking how these close these stores are to get, the, the buildings are right up against each other, the, the sh street is very narrow, it also then rules out the idea that she could have been attacked on the street without somebody noticing um, especially since she was known in the community. Uh, this is not New York City where everybody's just going about their own business. Everybody's strangers. Everybody knew each other. Everybody knew Treveline. And, I mean, really, the, the distance across the street is what? 30 feet or something? If this was your average uh, American road, American town... You know, the sides of the street might be separated by 90, 100 feet. Here, it's about 30 feet. It's like two basketball lanes on a basketball court. So we can see going down here, um, all these cars parked are all these people. Um, it's tough. This is why her disappearance is uh, such a mystery, especially to people who live in the area, because they know the area. We as Americans... Our ideas of a small town are certainly different than theirs. And th this is like a little bit of culture shock maybe uh, for some of us, especially if you've never been to Europe. I've never been, I've never been there. So these are uh, some of the locations. Looking at the river, 
It's just a little hard to understand where the storage little shop was. I don't know, but something else to think about is why would she get money or get milk and then go back out later to get, if it's even the same day, an apple and a banana? Why didn't she just do that all one time? My impression is when people are going to work, if they're going to stay at their store or job, office, cubicle, they just do it all at one time in the morning. They don't get something and then get to work and then say, oh, wait, I got to go out again. I suppose it could be if you just feel like getting out of the office, maybe. Um, but I also have to think about there are all those people in the store that uh, morning. Would she really just take off and you know pass up a sale? Of course, the sign said she'd be back in two minutes. I think what we're showing here is that two minutes... She couldn't have gone very far. And uh, I could be open to the idea that she was going to her car two minutes, maybe two minutes to go to her car and car and back. That's something to think about wherever her car was over in this area. But then what happened? Somebody just happened to be going by and attacked her. It's, it's, I'm not saying there are any facts to pass uh, to rule it out. But I think this in total just shows you how close these locations are. Her store, where she lived, and uh, how close everything is, how small this community is, and how she could just disappear off streets where everybody's probably up in everybody's business like most small town people are. Dare I say it. So that is my map analysis for uh, this disappearance of Treveline Evans. Maybe the map help, helps us out a little bit, looking at the river, maybe ruling that out. But other than that, maybe just looking at the map and everything, just there's more questions than answers. But that's the map analysis. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Consider supporting unfound on Patreon or hitting the join button below. Until next time.